Good afternoon, my name is Pranesh and welcome to my second stream. Today, on my trading notebook, I am going to be talking about a topic where I've titled Seduced by Volatility. Lovely title, but it's not as sexy as it seems. Right, so what happened? I had one of my biggest down days. One of my biggest down days, and it happened this Tuesday, Tuesday 5th of May. And I'll start off by telling you what I'd been doing before that. I'd been enjoying a good run of consistency. My confidence was high based on, back, on, on the back of this consistency. Um, I'd had like three or four good up days before this, coming into the uh, trading day with a high level of like composure, confidence, thinking, yep, it's going well, let's keep it going. And I started off the day, I was 20 points up on the day, which was not bad, but it was one of those days when, I don't know if you were watching the equities, but they became quite volatile, especially the stocks. And if you've watched the stocks, the Euro stocks, it has been quite quiet, volumes have been low, ranges have been really tight, it has like 20 to 30 tick ranges. And on Tuesday, this Tuesday, the stocks got quite busy. It started moving around. And I hadn't really traded stocks much in the past few weeks. And that sort of like triggered me. So when it became quite volatile, I started trading stocks a little bit more than I would do. But I'll come back to that a bit later on. But coming back to one of my biggest down days, I, the stocks got me trading more actively. And then I got triggered later on by some big losers in the euro following Yellen news. Don't know if you saw the comments. Yellen talking about higher interest rates, which caused a minor little, a moment of volatility again in the markets, which came at a very bad time for the frame of mind I was in. But again, I will get back to that in the future. So. Equities were volatile, I was 20 points on the day, got triggered by some big losers in the euro, and I very quickly raced to my stop of minus 40 points, trading SPU, the S&P 500, quite late in the US session. So I lost a lot of money in the US session. And that happened because I was in what I would call a zombie state. So what is a zombie state? I was trading in a way which was not ideal. I was like in a state, it's the opposite to an ideal trading state, so something I call the zombie state. But again, I'll get back to that a few slides down. Okay, so how did it happen? How did I have my biggest down day in a long time? So I, broke it, I break it down into three areas. So I talk about triggers, something that triggers me, triggers my performance, my behavior, my mindset, and that leads to tilt. And if you understand what tilt is, that's when you're trading in a way where you're not behaving in your best interest. You're doing things you should not really be doing, and you've lost a lot of control. And that's what led to my zombie state. Loss of control. So, what were the triggers on Tuesday? The main one, like I mentioned earlier, was volatility in equities. Volatility in equities got me thinking and trading more than I would normally do. So you know when you see the market moving, you don't want to miss out, and you start jumping in, doing trades which you would not normally do. Well, that's what I do. So volatility in equities was the trigger. And also, this combined with an overconfidence after a winning run, like I said before, I'd had two or three good, decent up days the week before. I was had decent profit on the day. And then the main trigger was a big losing trade or losing trades in the euro, which took me negative on the day. And just going negative from being up has a certain psychological impact, which is, it really screws you over. And you don't think, how the hell did I get there? 
and then you're triggered, and then you're trying to make that money back. But let's look at things a bit further. So what are the tilts? So tilts for me, tilts, impulsive over trading. So just, it's just, you just jump in. I was just jumping in. I wasn't planning my trades. I'd see the market move and I'd click the button. I'll see it move again, click the button. So that's one of my major tilts I've noticed in myself. Also, a chasing mentality. Again, that means for me, if I've lost money, if I'm down on the day, I hate being down and I try and chase that money back, which is not great because you start doing things which you would not normally do. And usually that leads to a quick succession of losers. I think we've all done this. So like I said, you might look to back every, make back everything in one trade. Major tilt I have sometimes. Another thing I do, I sometimes stay late to recover losses. So as you know, food will trade till nine o'clock, UK time. And I might stay till nine o'clock looking to back, make back what I've lost. Another tilt is like a trick, like we mentioned earlier, it's a trigger happy mindset just clicking the button on weak reasoning versus a strategic approach which I should be doing all the time. This is non-tilt, this is tilt. So, lack of control, indi indecisive entry. So by that I mean either entry too late, too early, just poor prices, you just click the button. And one thing I've noticed, the major thing that I tend to do sometimes, is repeat the same trade idea and take some more losses. So I'll have an idea, I'll jump in at a poor price, I'll put a tight stop, I'll get hit on that stop, I'll enter again, get hit on that stop, do that a few times, have the right idea, market will go, and I'm either making back what I've lost on the trades, or I'm just missing out on the actual move. And as you'll see later on, I've got examples of exactly what I did on that day. Right. Okay, so I mentioned earlier zombie state. What exactly is the zombie state? So for me, it's a mindset. You're in this level of, I guess, energy, low energy, where you're just not in the ideal trading state. So you're frustrated. You're having negative thoughts. Why is this happening to me? What have I done? I can't trade. You're stressed your energy is low, your physiology is bad, your shoulders might be sagging, you might be slouching in your chair, your breathing might be shallow, but these are all signs that you are in a zombie state. Another thing, fatigue, especially if you're staying quite late, lots of hours in front of the screen, you get fatigued, fatigue in the brain, fatigue in the eyes, and that is not helpful to be a successful trader. But yep, this was what I was in. I was in zombie state on Tuesday. Okay. And now I'm going to show you exactly what I did. So this is stocks, three minute chart. I've kept it quite simple. I've got a three minute chart just showing you my entries. I hope you can see that. So this is when I began impulsive trading. So like I said earlier, we had the volatility. Market started coming off quite a big range for stocks relative to what we'd been seeing quite recently. And initially, because we had been quite range bound, I started buying. So I bought it here, bought it here, took like small, small hits, so minus, I think minus, I lost five ticks, lost six ticks. And then I realized, okay, this is not a buying market. I really need to be selling it. But as I'd lost already on these longs, I was sort of like tilted like I mentioned earlier. And what do I do? I start selling. But instead of strategically waiting for good places to sell, I sell the lows. And what do I sell? I sell two clips. So here, one clip, one clip, sell two clips, take a small profit. Frustrated, not having to run it down to here, I sell the lows, two more clips. Having missed out on this whole move, I've sold two clips, at the very low at this moment in time. And what do I do? I get stopped out here. 
frustrating. And then it does come back down, haven't taken a stop, so I jump in again short and scratch. So ideally what I should be doing is not selling here, is waiting for a pullback, get short here. Fine, that's okay. I stopped trading stocks and then I waited. And then I got a good entry. I got short here. You see the short here? However, I was a little bit early. Took, I think I took five ticks, which at the time was good because it came back to the highs. But what I should have been doing is maybe waiting a little bit longer, maybe keeping this clip on and adding up here and to capture this move here. Now that's frustrating. So what do I do? I sell here. And do I run it down to here? No, I scratch. Again, frustrating. And then I start buying it, take a small profit. And then I bought it here, took a nice little profit. But in the whole scheme of things, I've missed out on some good selling movement. If I just waited for the, a nice moment to get short, maybe up here, maybe up here, I could have a nice day. But I overtraded, selling impulsively at poor prices. And when I did have the right idea, my execution was really bad. So really, I should have maybe had a stop up here and believed in the trade and added on the way down. Right. But guys, I actually find it really useful using like, I use TT and you can see your trades. And this is a really good snapshot of like the trades you do. And you can go back and look at what you've done badly. And this is like a beautiful representation of like how good you trade or how bad you trade. And I find it really powerful. Right, okay. So Euro, like I mentioned earlier, I took some big losses in the Euro. So on the day, I made money in SPU. I was up a decent amount of money. And then I got short on the Yellen comment of higher interest rates. However, I saw it coming off and I didn't know what the comment was. I sold it here, I added here, and I got out here. It's only afterwards that I made sense of the fact it was a comment which I'd missed. And then I thought, okay, this could be quite big. So what do I do? I'm frustrated that I missed out on this move here. So I sell the lows. And I sell four clips. So I had two clips here, four clips short at the lows. And what do I do? I get stopped out there. And I think I took a scratch from one of them. Okay, so I'm still up on the day, but I'm frustrated. So I jump in again. I think this is still going down. So I sell it again here. I average and I pay up here. So at this point, I'm pretty much flat on the day or a little bit down on what, I, what should have been a good day. So this made me had a really good day for a very split moment, but instantly entering again, I lost whatever I had on the day. And then I'm in tilt. So as you can see, there's a whole number of trades which I did very quickly. First of all, looking to sell it again, taking small profits on one clip, not making back what I've lost before. So then I start buying it, selling it, buying it. I did eventually get a nice winning trade here. That looks nice on the chart, but it's one clip and I've not made back anything like what I've lost before. So this is for me like a perfect illustration of tilt. Tilt triggered by a big loss in the market on news and then missing out on a nice part of the run and then getting aggressive at the wrong times. Okay. Okay, and then I mentioned earlier that I started chasing losses in SPU. And this happened from 5 p.m. Usually I try to be down by like four o'clock, four or five o'clock. But because I was down, and I wasn't down very much, but I was down and I was frustrated that I'd lost what I had earlier on, that I wanted to make back what I had. So I started jumping in. So from five o'clock, where my energy levels are quite low, I'm feeling quite fatigued. It's been quite a busy day. There's, I've done more trades than I would usually do because I'm the sort of trader that does like a handful of trades as opposed to like 
tens of 20, 30, 40 trades. I'd do maybe like up to 10 a day. And again, this was one of the days where I did the most number of trades since I've been trading. Okay, so chasing losses in the spoo, and it is a complete mess. It's a complete mess. It does not make sense. This is me trading in full tilt, and I can visually see the rubbish that I did. It's absolute rubbish. So over here, I want it to be long, so I'm buying repeatedly. Buy and take small losses. Buy, small loss. Buy, small loss. Buy, scratch. Buy, scratch. Buy, scratch. Then I, I I sold it here. And then it, when it does go up, I'm not long. OK, and then I start selling. Sell, scratch. Sell, scratch. Sell. Take a small profit from what should have been a bigger winner. Because here, I'm trying to make back what I've lost already. And then, it's not even worth explaining, guys. It's just craziness. Sell in, sell in. I managed to buy, but I'm not making back anything, rare, anything near what I've lost. I'm just over-trading. And just looking back at this, it just demonstrates how when I'm in tilt, and it happens very rarely, that I can do a lot of damage. Although I did keep my size quite low, but trading actively, doing rubbish trades, just churning out round turns, taking small losses, which add up. And by this time, from 5 p.m. up to 8, I'd gone down to like minus 40 points, which I, that was my risk for the day. I just got myself out 8 o'clock. And yeah, that was very frustrating. Went home, not very happy. Even here, as you can see, I got short here, missed out on a nice, I think, 30 tick move, and took a scratch, and then it went down again. That's tilt for you guys. Okay, so now that you, when I, whenever I know I'm in tilt and I've lost money, the most important thing is to recover. And it's what I call bounce. Bounce, I think the ability to bounce is what is a difference between being an average trader and a great trader. So there will be moments when you do lose money. I think there will be moments when I do go in tilt. But the main thing is to come back the next day and bounce. So how do you bounce? So rest is very important. Take some time out from the markets when you go home. A positive mindset. The next day when you come in, do thorough prep. More thorough than you'd had done the day before, just to get in the right, to frame yourself up for the right, for the day. Plan your trades. Like I said, until you're just jumping in, I'm jumping in, I'm not planning. It's important to plan. Have a game plan. Know what you want to do. Know what levels you want to enter. And keep the risk tight. So the next day, keep your risk tight. The aim is to finish positive. It doesn't matter how much how much important to be green on the day. So the next day, I was green. I didn't make very much money, but I made sure I traded very few times. I think I did like three or four trades on the Wednesday, and I managed to finish positive. But coming into that day, I knew it was so important to finish positive from a mindset perspective, because if you get into like a rut, you have a bad day, and if you have a second bad day, and then a third bad day, that becomes like a mini rut. And to get out of that mini rut takes a lot of work. So sometimes it's best just to try your best and nip it in the bud, get an update, get, get it green, so when you, to, to try and rebuild that confidence. So that's what I define as bounce. And bounce, you need a lot of bounce as a trader. Okay. And like I mentioned, the performance risk, if, you, if I don't bounce quickly, as I mentioned, it's going to lead to weak performance on the following days, losing days, and loss of confidence. So, just to sum up, there will be times when I will be in tilt, but the main thing is to recognise those moments and take the necessary action to bounce. So I might have a day where I do lose money, and there will be days. I think every trader will have days when they lose money. 
But the key thing is to bounce. Because if you don't bounce quickly, you could set yourself up for a little mini cycle of weak performance over the coming days. So, like I said, you, I, may, I will be tilted in the future. Key learning, recognize that quickly. And then come back the next day and bounce very quickly. So, key message, learn to bounce. Thank you so much, have a great day. If you find this video interesting, if you want to go deep into the Axia training method and how our trading team of seven-figure traders develop setups and strategies and how they learn to build the most profitable trades across all market environments, then join me in this workshop. Now in this workshop, you're going to learn three powerful steps we use to train all our traders on both our London and our Poland trading desks to help build incredible levels of consistency. How to predictably understand which setups work and which don't. You're going to learn our two main strategies for how we perfect our trade timing before we enter every single trade. You're going to learn the VEL concept, which is our one and only technique we use to leverage our largest trades. You'll also learn how to avoid trading setups that don't work, how to avoid those large losses, and our main method we use to identify them that saves our traders significant amounts of capital. Finally, you will learn how our traders use the power of network learning to find market patterns quicker than ever before, so you shortcut that learning curve. In the workshop, we want to program your awareness of elite performance, to program your ability to choose the right setups, and program your ability to be a consistent trader. So the trades that you execute become more simple and clearer. And I can tell you this, you'll never see the markets the same again. You'll never look at the markets with a narrow view of getting lost in all the noise and confusion. You'll take your first step towards a deep edge market awareness. I cannot wait for you to join me in this workshop. And I think you're in for a massive paradigm shift in your understanding of how to develop as a trader. So join me by clicking on the top right hand corner of the screen and sign up for this powerful training workshop or visit EliteTraderWorkshop.com.